Good morning, afternoon, or evening to you fine ladies and gentlemen out there. My name is Trollic, and today we are back with another hopefully useful video for you. This is not an animation vid like I usually end up posting. This is a more business driven type of video looking at a workaround for Code Interpreter. If you don't know what Code Interpreter is, it's a plugin that OpenAI has been developing. OpenAI is the founder of ChatGPT. They've been developing this plugin that essentially lets you provide ChatGPT4 with a CSV file or I believe possibly an Excel file which ChatGPT can then analyze and provide you insights and graphs about. This method that I'm about to show you was not created by me. I do want to give credit where credit is due because this is very intuitive. It's very simple, but it's very smart. So this method was originally created by Cup of Marketing. I kind of actually just found this channel, but he seems to be doing a really good job at posting how to use these types of tools. So if this is something that you're interested in and you don't fully understand how to use something like ChatGPT yet, this might be a channel that's worth taking a look at. Now there's a couple of things that need to be addressed before we get into this. So there are some things that you need in order to actually do this. The first being ChatGPT4. So if you don't have that yet, 100%, I would go get it. It's kind of pricey at 20 bucks a month, but it's really not too bad when you get access to the newest and latest features. So when Code Interpreter does eventually come out, you will have access to it before anybody else really. Um, and additionally, you do need the ChatGPT Plus membership because ChatGPT4 has plugins and ChatGPT 3.5 does not. So you need the plugins feature in order to do this type of process. Additionally, you will also need like a well formatted CSV file. You need data that's formatted properly. And I'm not going to be going over how to do that here, but as a brief rundown, you could also ask ChatGPT if you're not sure what that means. All you really have to do is make sure that each column has its own dedicated data in it. And the first row in each column is your headers for that column, basically indicating what the variable is. So for example, a1 cell a1 in an excel file would be like the company name for example right so that's what you would do and you would do that for each variable and make sure that it's formatted correctly so that if you were to provide it to anybody it would be easily legible easily readable and somebody would be able to understand what they were looking at just by opening the file Additionally, one more thing that I wanted to say is consider what data you're providing here. I haven't fully looked into Notable and their services or what they do really. They seem to be a very legit company that's very focused on data handling and making sure that the data is received and transferred ethically and properly and that it's not getting into any of the wrong hands. However, it's still important that if you're using really sensitive data or data on your on your business or on a business that you're working for that maybe shouldn't be shared that information probably should not be provided to chat gpt or notable but if you have the authority or kind of the need i guess to provide your own data as i'm going to be doing here then that's totally fine too just be conscious of what you're doing and what you're providing to open ai because i 100% promise you that that data is being recirculated into ChatGPT for its own training. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so once you have your requirements with the proper CSV file and ChatGPT+, just go ahead and open ChatGPT, go to ChatGPT4, click on plugins, and you're gonna wanna search for this one right here, Notable. You can ignore these two, this is just something that I was fiddling with, you really want Notable. So just click on plugins, Notable, install. Okay, once that's done, you can just go to Notable's website and just make an account. Um, you can make it with whatever account you want. You can either sign in with Google or make your own. I think they have some other ways that you can log in. I believe ChatGPT will also prompt you on uh, making an account if you try and just provide the CSV file right away. So don't even say anything here. Once you have the plugin installed, just install the plugin, make your account and follow the instructions that are provided to you once you install the Notable plugin. However, if you didn't get a prompt, you can just go to their website, like I mentioned, and make an account. And then once you have made an account, what you're gonna wanna do is just come to your main page where your projects are and make a new project. So for this one, we're just gonna call it uh, YouTube Notable Tutorial. 
we'll just go ahead and make that new project and once we're in here inside the actual project itself you're going to want to upload your file so i have been putting them in as csvs i have not tried to see if uh, it will handle excel files or not i've only tried csv files so we're going to do this one right here, which is a sample CSV file of my own data that I've collected from my own business that's been adapted. So again, going back to the whole being careful with data type of conversation, you want to make sure you're not providing anything sensitive. So this is just a sample set. All the information we're going to get doesn't really matter. So just throw in your CSV, make sure it's in there and you can go ahead and just quit out of that. So one of the most important parts is prompting your chat GPT thread properly. You have to make sure that you're providing it all the necessary information in order to do its job effectively. One of the big misunderstandings with chat GPT is that you can give it a general type of question and that it can create assumptions on what you're looking for because its knowledge is that in depth in such a wide variety of things. However, what's important to understand is that it's the same as talking to a person. If you gave a person a general instruction, like making a marketing plan, nobody has any idea what that means they can provide you the general structure of what a marketing plan might look like but if they don't have that additional information on the context of your business your business environment and what your goals are then it really doesn't matter so here what you're looking at is just a quick little thing that i've typed out for ChatGPT to better understand what the goal is and what we're doing here so here is kind of the main objective, right? So you're an expert data analysis specializing in helping companies grow, uh, look through their data, yada, yada. And here I just provide some information that's kind of uh, in progress for, you know, just a sample business, basically. Uh, this would be, for example, the first paragraph of the executive summary, right? So just a general uh, introduction as to what the business is that there's the context of the environment and the industry uh, some information about like what you do what you're looking for so I mentioned that we're looking for total expenses in 2022 2023 uh, some other general things and then what you see here is also extremely important this is something that notable in chat GPT would be able to figure out by itself but it's one of those things where if you can make its job easier and quicker why not do it Plus, you'll have this list for the future if you ever need to redo this type of process on a different device or on a different ChatGPT account, for example. Uh, but what this is here is basically the variables. So like we talked about, you know, having the company name in cell A1 and then B1 and C1 and so on and so forth for all your different variables. That's what these are. And I'm basically just explaining uh, what the conditions are for each variable and how they're calculated, what they mean, why I Felt I needed them and then I just provided a general summary of what we're looking for a little thank you because we always should be respectful uh, in case of a terminator situation and here is the most important part what this link is this is what you're gonna provide to chat GPT so that it can actually do its analysis and this link is literally just your project file uh, or your project link right so we made the YouTube notable tutorial project in there we put our CSV file what we're going to do is we're going to take this copy it and then just put it at the end of your message right now we can take this entire thing go over to chat gpt4 paste it make sure that we have this link in here that it's pasted correctly that it's reading the right thing and that our csv file is in here and we just send it off now the coolest part about notable in my opinion is the fact that you can actually see what it's doing while it's doing it and so a lot of this stuff is gibberish to people that don't understand code like myself, but essentially it's better than not seeing anything in my opinion. Some of it is written in plain English, like for example, the user can now follow along with your cell work at the notebook link. This in and of itself is also a cool feature. Uh, what this means is that if we go back in here, you'll see that we have a new file created, this IPYNB file. If we click on it, this is where data analysis is actually being done in regard to the data that we provided. So what um, Notable is gonna do is it's gonna look at the file we've provided, it's going to read it in using pandas, and it's going to try and understand what's in it just to get some general analysis on it, and then it's going to try and answer the questions that we provided. A common issue that I've been seeing is that it can't seem to load the directory this isn't that big of a deal. So if we go back here, it's gonna say, yeah, that it's 
apologizing for the confusion, but it will try and correct itself, and usually it will. If it can't correct itself, you can actually just change this manually. Yeah, see, there you go. It ended up doing it itself. Um, if you needed to change it manually, all you would need to do is go over here where your CSV file is, click these dots, click copy path, and then just paste that here. So you can see how this is different than this, right? It's in a different directory. So this is where the issue was. It wasn't supposed to add this part. Again, you probably will run into this issue. So that's why I wanted to mention that it will likely figure it out itself. But if it doesn't, it's a very easy fix. So now obviously, it's actually something really cool happening here. So what's happening is we have ChatGPT basically giving us live updates on what it's doing, or rather the data, data analysis doc updating live so we can actually see what's happening while ChatGPT tells us what's going on over here, which is pretty cool. So right now it's just trying to go through the questions that we asked it and start looking at the data as well as getting some of those general insights that we asked for, right? So for example, you can see that it's doing some pretty cool stuff. Like it's uh, over here, we can see that it's changing the numeric data type. It can, here we go. It's already calculated the total expenses basically for you know the, our fake company here with our fake numbers. So the total expenses were 151 and total expenses so far are 156. I haven't done the calculations for this, but it does seem about right. I believe that's what the numbers came out to be. And we can see all of this happening live over here, which is really, really cool because you can go a lot further with this. If you needed to hire an actual data analyst, like for example, let's say you did this analysis, you try to take it as far as you could possibly go with it, and it just doesn't seem to want to give you the insights that you're looking for. For example, it's not doing K nearest neighbors or naive bays or K means or clustering or any of that, right? It's not taking those data analysis techniques and applying them. So at that point, what you could do is you could provide this Jupyter notebook file right here to an actual data analyst and they can see exactly what was done. And even the best part about it is that ChatGPT provides hashtags and headers for exactly what it's doing. So this is about a, a great head start, as best of a head start as you could have for data analysis without having code interpreter or really having to do any work that there is out there right now. I mean, there's really nothing like this that I've been able to see other than hiring an actual data analyst. So we can see that it's kind of completed its analysis. It doesn't have anything else to say. It seems to have answered generally most of our questions. For example, it got the expenses in 2022 and 23, the average number of days between projects, which is really cool because this is a number that's actually kind of tough for me to um, calculate uh, just for my brain. I don't know why, but so it got some of these general questions, but now what we can do to make it go even further is all we have to do is say, continue. And what it will do is it'll continue to do the data analysis and look through the data that we've provided and gather whatever insights that it can. So ultimately, I think the value here is pretty self-explanatory. Like we can see what the benefit of this is. It's just a matter of how you use it and whether or not Code Interpreter will be released right after this video, uh, because the AI industry is just moving so fast, you never really know when things are gonna change. But for the moment, I think this is a fantastic workaround and something that it could be really applicable to business right now. Like you could go ahead, if you are a business that's been running for some time, you could go and do this with your data today, right? So there's nothing stopping you from getting what could cost thousands of dollars done in minutes. Like here's a, a perfect example. We've just been provided uh, a distribution of project durations. So we can see the frequency of projects and the number of days until completion. So we've had two different projects that have taken uh, less than 20 days to complete. So great, approximately 78% of the projects were completed on time, good rate, but there may be room for improvement. So it can also go beyond just providing you the numbers and it can actually provide some insight on what those numbers mean relative to your industry, which is why this additional information right here from the executive summary is so important. You can't underestimate the power of context when it comes to ChatGPT. Wow, I don't even know what this is. So we're getting some really, really intense stuff here. And the craziest part about all of this to me is the fact that this isn't even code interpreter yet. This is just 
like a Dollar Tree version of it. I really want to know what Code Interpreter in and of itself is going to be able to do relative to uh, Notable AI. But yep, so this is all I have for you guys today. I really do hope that this was helpful because I find this extremely interesting. And I hope that this guys this helps you guys with your own business and helps you guys see between the data. So, all right, have a good day and I will see you guys in the next one. Love you all.